I, I can remember the time when finally my parents just like took the training wheels off me and said, hey, you know what? You, you, you've, you've got this boating figured out. You know what? You're responsible enough with it. You, you know the water. I, I would go from sunrise to sunset. I was so obsessed with it. Any day I could get out there, I was always seeing sheep's head. I'm a happy guy, you know that, right? <laughs> I think Jared gets geeked out about the sheep's head. It's, I think, it, honestly, it brings him back to, you know, his, his childhood, his youth. You got him, baby! You got him! <laughs> oh, I got him, man. I mean, it's, it's just a rare breed to understand the, the style of fishing that we we're doing today. I get it. Keep going slow. Here he comes. Keep going, keep going slow. Keep going. Got him. Pull. Let him go. Nasty! Nasty, buddy! Oh, my God! Oh. <laughs> got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him, got him. Got him baby. Get tight. Up tight, baby. Up tight. It's all 90 pounders. 90 yeah. pounders? Oh, oh, oh. Big fish, too. It's a big one. Oh, baby. Come it's on. It's a big one. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You gotta only use medical. It's all the way over here. Yep, yep. Oh, oh, yeah, baby! I got him. I got him. I got him. Oh, oh my god, Greyhound! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> when you think about fishing as, you know, a whole. There's so many different types of, and styles of fishing from offshore and inshore and the, the fly fishing and you know what kind of baits and everything to use and you know that's what makes it it's the hunt, it's the, it's the chase, it's the quest of any species and, and, and figuring out their habits and the way to fish them but I still haven't found anything that is as difficult as a sheep's head. Dude, <laughs> that's so good. That's so, I mean, that's straight to the dome. Oh, God. When Jared asked me to do a sheep's head episode with him, honestly, it kind of fit right into what we do as anglers. And um, it's about as technical as it gets. You know, you're trying to fit a fly, a shrimp, you know, a lure into a dinner plate size hole in the mangroves. And uh, it's not easy, man. Even when you get it in the right spot, they tough. This, this stuff kind of makes me smile, though. It brings me back. Yeah? Yeah, you know, when you get a fun day, it reminds me of like back when I was a kid. I'd go in anything, right? And of course, we'd all want to go catch the glamorous tarpon, the permit, and the bonefish. But Days like today were the days I would just go and get behind leeward shorelines and just pull stuff and never would pull. Yeah. And as I would be doing it, all I would see most of the time was sheep's head, sheep's head, sheep's head. Then I realized very quickly that they're the hardest fish there is <laughs> on the flats to catch. I think Jared gets geeked out about the sheep's head. It's, I think it, honestly it brings him back to, you know, his, his childhood, his youth. I can remember the time when finally my parents just like took the training wheels off me and said, hey, you know what? You, you, you've, you've got this boating figured out. You know what? You're responsible enough with it. You, you know the water. You're good. And, you know, this is before iPhones and you could track it and you talk to them. So it was a little different. I didn't have a GPS. So when I had the first chance I could start going out in the Florida Bay on my own, I, I would go from sunrise to sunset. I was so obsessed with it. Any day I could get out there. So I would go out and I would just sit there and pull and pull and pull and pull and pull and just try to figure it all out. And I was ready with, you know, all of a sudden like, oh man, there's snook, okay, we have a jerk bait. Okay, there's, you know, redfish, okay, I got shrimp. But, you know, I was always seeing sheep's head. We gonna catch the sheep's head, man. They got them big old teeth like that, man. <laughs> sheep's head. <laughs> the big old sheep nasty. It's, it's about tricking them. You know, and that's that's what gets me. It's like, it's it's how you fool this fish in this clear water is what the the whole stock is to me on sheep's head. It's not about the fight. 
obviously I think they could look cool man they got them big old big old human teeth looking out at you they're gnarly looking they are gnarly looking but I respect them that's why I respect how smart they are and so you know we'll see what we can do The, the, the opportunities with fish with buddies these days is, is becoming more of a rare occasion. You know, all of our lives have just kind of changed in, in, in the best ways. You know, we have we have wives, you know, and we have now we have young children and you know, as they get a little bit older now they're they're busy with different kinds of uh, camps and school and sports, recreational sports and when we have a day on the water, it, it's kind of just for us to get together and vent and laugh. So what's your preferred sheep's head tide? <laughs> you guys laugh now, but when I hook up, we'll see who's laughing. $200 spin rod, $400 spin reel. Sheep's head. Sheep's head fishing. What else? <laughs>60 seconds in the mill house. When people hear the name Richard Stanzik, they think of swordfish. They think of Bud and Mary's and they think of swordfish. But many people don't realize or didn't know that you had a love affair with bonefish. I did. And big bonefish, right? Back in the day. I've had a love affair with Warsaw groupers. I've had a love affair with sailfish. I've had a love affair with blue marlin. I've had a love affair with schnook. I spent 20-some years of my life with a fly rod in a boat and never put bait in it. I guess I had two claims to fame in uh, the bonefish world. I think it was 1987 I did win the Fly Bonefish Tournament. And uh, and I also, the year, uh, caught, I was the guide to the world record bonefish on a fly rod. And that was that was 14 pounds, 6 ounces? It was. It's that fish right there. Wow. And actually, Dr. Hines had really discovered uh, swordfish off Venezuela. Okay, and it caught them in the daytime. We did not discover daytime sword fishing. We imported it. Oh, from Venezuela. From, right. But now, understand, in Venezuela, it's 800 feet deep and there's no current. Out here, it's much different. 1,700 feet deep and a three-knot current, which right. I'll get into a little of that as well. To watch this and other full-length episodes of the Millhouse podcast, go to YouTube or wherever you find your podcasts. Ten years since I would looked at this. Yeah. You know, but there was a time that a lot of these shorelines, almost every one had redfish all over it. Really? You know, yeah. You get out, get in the lee of an island, and start pulling it, and you would get shots of redfish. Stay out just a little bit wider now that we have a good view there. Oh, go back in there. Oh, don't do that to me. He's 
still there. Son of a beast! <laughs> oh, <laughs> so good. Then you see him spin around and he goes, oh, yeah. Donk. Donk. Oh, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Heartbreaker, man. <laughs> I might have officially pissed him off. I think I would have, I think I kind of ruined it. <laughs> He's little, <laughs> little mouth. Oh, there he is. Go forward just a little bit. This one's creeping. Problem is the snappers are just, these two are, they know. If I can get up in that hole though, I could probably, there he is, hold on, there's that little guy. There he is, right in the middle of the hole. See him? Oh, He's yeah. on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got him. You got him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> you got oh, him. Dude, I'm telling you. You see how he stopped his pec pins go like that? He go, boom. Oh, oh that's so cool. That is, I don't care, that's awesome. Right there. <laughs> that oh, awesome. man. The P's on the get him out. <laughs> Is what gets me. Nicely I don't care. Done. We're gonna. I'm, I want to catch bigger ones, but this right here, the reward of tricking one of these things. I still, to this day, haven't fished for a species of fish that is more difficult and frustrating and technical. You got to be stealthy. You got to. You got to get in there in their habitat. You got to go through little islands and you find them, and you're in gin clear water, and and, and that's a sheep's head to me. Nice. I'm a happy guy, you know that, right? <laughs> huh? Exactly what I wanted, but I want, I want some big ones. But after missing a couple of these guys. Mind if I take a photo? Uh, go for it. Look at that thing, look at those teeth. Look at those teeth, that's why it's hard to hook them. You gotta get them right in that corner there, man. That's a face of mother can only love right there. But man, there's some areas where these big ones are laying. Mm -hmm. That's what I want, I want the big one. I want the big one. Bring them up closer to your face and give me like a... I've had the guide service in Louisiana for the last 13 years and, you know, sheep's head's uh, one of the sought after species that we target other than big redfish and black drum and we call them Cajun permit for one reason, is because they're tough. Uh, they're tough to feed a fly to, they're tough to feed a shrimp to, but it's, uh, it's, it's a fun fish to go after because they're not easy. They don't just give it up and they make you work for it. That is a good, good fish for you, Mr. Rascog. I mean, that's how you do it. <laughs>
still trying to figure out why you think we needed like 12 dozen shrimp to do this. Never know. I'm still trying to figure out the math on this. You just never know. <laughs> it's better to have them <laughs> than not have them. Okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, Flashed there he is. Cuda? Oh, that's a snook. 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 Yeah. That's awesome. Gin clear. It's pretty. I mean, it's like it was when I was a kid, man. The same little zones are, it's cool to see. It really is, you know, because I, I, I completely forgot about all these little zip codes now. You know? Pretty, pretty, pretty. And you can see, this one has a bunch of sea lice all over them. See that? Look at these. Yeah, we see the, uh, used to see those on the redfish in Louisiana. Yeah, a bunch of sea lice all over them. I mean, this one has, look at all of them on its Got tail. a bunch of them. I don't know if that's a good thing for them or? I've always thought that it, you know, means that they're fresh, you know, new coming in. All right, buddy. Just hit that current. Man, I'm telling you what, thanks for Dude. allowing me to stay on the bow because I am having... Keep, keep at it. It's fun to watch. It's fun to do. <laughs> How much time do you practice doing that? Skipping it. Uh. Back in the day, that's all, that's all I used to do, man. Yeah. Big snapper wanted to get hold of that thing, huh? <laughs> he wanted to get a hold of it. That's a good one. You know, when you're a kid, you don't care what you're catching. <laughs> and uh, realize 17 years later, I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> still don't, man. Care, you know? The snapper, I mean, obviously, it, Sheep said of just uh, how difficult they are, but skipping these jerk baits when you see some snook will work. It's fun. Still got to try to find that sheep's head, but you know me, I can't help but cast at everything that comes by the boat. Cast at everything. Cast, cast at free, everything. Right? Look at the size of that fish. This is a beast, dude. Beast mode. Maverick, fish the legend. At Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, we're working to make sure that you'll find healthy populations of bonefish, tarpon, and permit at your favorite destinations. From the Florida Keys to Belize, from the Bahamas to Mexico. But we need your help to fight for clean water and healthy habitats. After all, if we don't conserve our flats fisheries, who will? Please support us today at btt.org and help us bring science to the fight. Silver Kings is brought to you in part by Free Fly Apparel. Comfort on, adventure out. Mako Reels, built to last, built to stop. By Yeti, built for the wild. And by Ameritrail Trailers. Load, launch, relax. Load it. Real forward. Real forward. Real forward. Real forward. Real forward. <laughs> And now, a minute from our conservation partner, Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. In our effort to keep unsustainable boat traffic off our shallow waters, BTT is bringing science to the fight by working closely with the Lower Keys Guides Association and the Florida Keys Fishing Guides Association to map out priority areas for protection. These protections include no motor zones, which are pole troll only zones, idle speed zones, and no anchor zones. Ultimately, these zonings should help move boat traffic off our flats and let them recover and let our fisheries thrive. To learn more, visit btt.org. Yeah! 
Yeah, buddy. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Super rad seeing that thing in this clean water. Oh, God. Things all over there. <laughs> oh, I forgot I had that little hook. All in that clear water. That's awesome. That's awesome. A chunky one, too. It is a chunky one. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm gonna watch the trim tab. That was cool. It was cool. It is cool, Greg. <laughs> nice. All right. Nice chunk. Out east, clean, gin clear water. Redfish. A little chunky. He liked that shrimp. If you're offshore fishing and all of a sudden you're looking, you're doing a swordfish drop and you have, you're, you're up and down, but all of a sudden here comes a school dolphin. Right, you're gonna take advantage of that opportunity. So it's the same thing in the backcountry of having the right tackle ready for opportunities. And when you're fishing around mangrove shorelines and flats and mangrove shoots and stuff, you know, predators like little tarpon and snook and redfish all live in the same areas. And why would you not take advantage of those opportunities when, if they come? Nice, man. <laughs> that was cool, brother. Not the sheep's head again, but uh, I'll cast it anything that swims by this boat. All right, let's hope now there's to be some sheep's head cruising down here. There's, there's one up in that corner, isn't it? Oh, you just can't hook him. I mean, I could feel him when you said he ate it. I just sit there like letting him eat it, letting him eat it, letting him eat it. Got him, baby! <laughs> oh, I got him, man. Was there one or two in there? There's just one single fish. That was awesome. Oh. You got him, dude. I got him. Oh, I could feel it, and this time I'm like, please, just, just hook him. <laughs> <laughs> hook where it needs to be hooked. <laughs> this is dope. The, I'm telling you, the joy of this fish right here brings me. There's so much. All right? That little thing right That there. little thing, dude. Oh, my God, I love them. I mean, the other ones were pretty big. They were good ones. But that's what makes it so difficult. Nicely did. Dude, you don't understand, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's just a rare breed to understand the, the style of fishing that we were doing today. We got two of these things and along the way, you know. But like that right there, I mean, look how gin clear it is. You see how tight you have to cast. Small hooks. That guy right there <laughs> made my day. I'm telling you, you made I'm my glad day. Glad you were up on the bow. I made, that ain't easy. That made my day. That fish right there. You know, it's not dirty water with a crab on the bottom or a shrimp on the bottom. Is as technical as it gets. Thanks for the pull, dude. Man. That was awesome. Awesome. Brother. It was awesome. That was, that was fun to it was, watch. It was cool to just do something different and get t get tucked out of the wind and play around with species that I used to play around when I was a kid. You know, I mean, I got, I have an obsession with these things. You know, I even have mounts and different kind of things around my house of, of sheep's head. So it's a different breed, like I said, to un understand and enjoy. But until you do that, the technical side of it, no one gets it. I get it. Woo! Comes. Oh.